So as you all know by now, the deadliest mass shooting in American history took place last Sunday at a gay nightclub called Pulse, and 53 people were injured while 49 people were killed by an individual who I refuse to name because in doing so, I'm giving him exactly what he wants. Fame. Not going to do that. Now, I don't necessarily want to talk about the details of the story because by now, you guys all know the details, but what I want to talk about is the opportunistic politicians that tried to score some political points because of this deadly shooting. So Mike Huckabee, the infamous anti-gay politician, tweeted, Please join Janet and me in praying for the victims of the Orlando attack and their families. Now, just to clarify, Mike, when you say victims, are you talking about the people who you've called an abomination for decades? Is that the victims you're talking about who you want to pray for now, who suddenly you feel sorry for? I'm just curious. And also, if you're going to pray, why not pray for God to stop this from happening in the first place? Why wait to pray until after it happens? Why not just pray that bad things don't happen? I mean, wouldn't you be more effective if you do believe in prayer that way? It, it doesn't make sense to me. Now, also, Ted Cruz tweeted out, Today, all of America stands in solidarity with the people of Orlando. Actually, what he means is that he stands in solidarity with the shooter because not too long ago, Ted Cruz spoke at an anti-gay event where the pastor literally said that gays need to be put to death. So, when Ted Cruz talks about standing in solidarity, He's in solidarity with the religious extremists that carried out this attack. And Hillary Clinton doesn't get a pass either, so uh, she said to the LGBT community, please know that you have millions of allies across the country. I am one of them. Oh, so now you're our ally since you need our votes, but you weren't our ally when we needed you. So a couple years prior, your daughter was getting married, and you thought it was perfectly acceptable that she could get married because she's marrying someone of the opposite gender, yet... You claim that LGBT people did not deserve the same rights. But now all of a sudden that you need votes, when you decided to come around? Hmm. So are you or aren't you with us? So you don't get to rewrite history and pretend as though you've been there all along, Hillary. We know that you're only pandering to us because you need our votes. Sickening. Now, Donald Trump tweeted, Appreciate the congrats for being right on radical Islamic terrorism. I don't want congrats. I want toughness and vigilance. We must be smart. Oh, don't you worry, asshole. We're not going to take the time to congratulate you. And uh, I'm glad, though, that you had time to stop and gloat after nearly 50 people were killed. This guy is absolutely unbelievable. Stay classy. Now, he also tweeted out, Thank you to the LGBT community. I will fight for you while Hillary brings in more people that will threaten your freedoms and beliefs. Now, just to clarify, when he says he's going to fight for us, what he actually means is he's going to fight against us because he said that he would appoint Supreme Court justices that would overturn the landmark marriage equality ruling. So, he's not going to fight for us. He's fighting against us. He said it. Not me. So you can keep the pseudo support, dickhead. We don't want your support, Donald Trump. You're a bigot, and you don't score any points with us because you're pandering to us because you want our votes now. And furthermore, I love how you implied that this was an immigrant who carried out this attack. This individual was born in America. He purchased the gun legally. Now, these are just a few examples of some politicians, mostly anti-gay Republicans, but Democrats as well, who are trying to capitalize on this tragedy. Now, right after everyone supposedly coalesced around the gay community because everyone is anti-homophobia now. Well, guess what happened? The GOP in the House blocked the bill that would prevent discrimination against the LGBT community. I'm not joking. Now, also, House Speaker Paul Ryan called for a moment of silence, but then refused to discuss legislation that would limit gun violence. So let me get this straight. You all want to take the time to gain some political points off the deaths of LGBT people, but when it comes to actually protecting them, the only thing that you're proposing we should do is be an asshole to Muslims? <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. I don't see where that logic comes from. The guy was on the FBI watch list and he was able to purchase the gun legally. He couldn't fly in a plane if he wanted to, but he could legally purchase a gun. Okay. That makes no sense. If you want to do something, if you really care about gay people, like you say you do, but you don't, what you should do is ban people who are on the FBI watch list from purchasing guns. That's just the start. That's just common sense right there. But you don't care. You're trying to use Muslims as a scapegoat when we all know that there are Christians who are very much agreeing with this guy. Case in point. The good news is that there's 50 less pedophiles in this world because, you know, these homosexuals are a bunch of disgusting perverts and pedophiles. That's who was a victim here, are a bunch of just disgusting homosexuals at a gay bar. Hey, are you sad that 50 pedophiles were killed today? 
Um, no, I think that's great. I, I, I think that helps society. You know, I think Orlando, Florida is a little safer tonight. Now that 50, you know, the tragedy is that more of them didn't die. Let me just remind you that the United States is the one exception where this occurs all the time. Mass shootings don't happen in Canada and the UK and Australia. And even the Republicans perpetuate the myth that they ban guns in Australia after a mass shooting, they didn't do that. Thousands and thousands of people still own guns in Australia, and guess what happened? There hasn't been any mass shootings. So yes, there are actual steps that we can take. We have actual empirical evidence of what policies work, but yet these politicians are refusing to act because they are bankrolled by the NRA and they are political cowards. So now there's disagreement about whether this is a hate crime or it was a terrorist attack. Well, it was both. And we can't just have a discussion about guns and not about religion and vice versa. Both of these things are problematic in here. So what would I do? So this is me personally, but one, I'd start with actually getting common sense gun reform. We don't have to actually repeal the Second Amendment. I don't think anyone on the left is actually proposing that. But what we can do is institute gun reform that we all agree with. 90% of the country want federally mandated universal background checks. Let's start there. That would have prevented the shooter from legally purchasing a gun. Now, second of all, we have to have a discussion about religion. Yes, we can, and we should blame religion in this case as well. Now, I'm not going to allow Islam to be the only religion to be scapegoated because there are plenty Christians who are just as radical, who call for the d deaths of gay people, as is the case in the video that I showed you. So when we talk about religion, we can't talk about it in a vacuum. We have to talk about all religions. And we can talk about religion, including Islam, in a manner that's productive, that wouldn't create more bigotry against Muslims and religious minorities in other countries as well. Because I think that we should have this. As a society, we have to come together as humans and dump religion once and for all. Would it be the case that this guy... Uh, maybe wouldn't have carried out the shooting and would have just accepted himself as a homosexual male if it wasn't for a religion. I don't know. Would it be the case that federally mandated background checks would have prevented him from buying a gun? I don't know, because he could have alternately purchased firearms illegally. But here's what I do know. These are things that we have to tackle as a species, as a society.